नाश्ता करके व्यास विपाशा के किनारे जा पहुंचा वह पत्थरों के बीच से गर्जना करती हुई बही चली जा रही है पानी दिखे तो दिखे स्वेट फैन मानो धसता चला जाता है कितना सारा पानी बहा जा रहा है मुझे अपनी साबरमती याद आई हिमाचल की इतनी सारी नदियों में एक इस व्यास को अपने यहाँ नहीं बहवाया जा सकता इस गर्मी में ज्यो ज्यो बर्फ पिघलती है त्यों त्यों पानी बढ़ता जाता है रास्ते में चलते चलते देखता हूँ कि दो रहे पर्वत श्रृंगों के बीच हिमाचादित श्वेत शिखर सुशोभित हो रहा है हल्के हल्के बादल हैं, स्थानीय लोग टट्टू के साथ जा रहे हैं पहाड़ में से झरने दौड़े चले आते हैं और विपाशा में मिल जाते हैं पहले मुझे लगता था कि अनुपम प्राकृतिक शोभा के कारण ही कुल्लू को देवों की घाटी कहा जाता होगा इसलिए कहते हैं मुझे कोई आपत्ति नहीं है क्योंकि कुल्लू का यह क्षेत्र आर्य संस्कृति की उदय काल की भूमि है हिंदू धर्म की सदियों पुरानी परंपराएं आज भी सुरक्षित हैं। Thus it reflects on the mind of a star-crossed traveller who has been intrigued all his life by a desire to explore beyond the boundaries both of geography and of perception. Bhola Bhai Patel has travelled some 75 years of life now and has finally settled down in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. It was a journey that started in 1934. in the soja village of amdabad district son of a school teacher who was a farmer by family traditions young bhola bhai never really got attached to the ancestral profession he would rather love to imagine that his apparently inconspicuous village has a wavy river flowing by it or snowy mountains casting their cool shadows on it it was a wanderlust that he started pampering deep inside his heart from that very young age but life had other plans for him he became a school teacher at an age of 18 he repented for not being able to chase his dreams and at the same time enjoyed teaching deep beneath the wanderlust was growing ye mera gaon hai ye mera ghar hai ek gaon jahan se maine apni jeevan yatra shuru ki thi jahan mera janm hua tha वही ये घर है और यहाँ से बचपन बिता करके यहाँ के स्कूल में पढ़ कर के मैं मनुष्य हुआ बड़ा हुआ यहाँ इस मेरे गांव में एक जैसे भारत के हजारों गांव जैसा एक गांव है जहाँ ना कोई पर्वत है जहाँ ना कोई नदी है न तो इसका कोई ऐतिहासिक महत्व है लेकिन इसीलिए मेरे गांव के प्रति मेरा एक आदर है लेकिन मैं सोचता हूं कि मेरे गांव के पास एक नदी होती एक पर्वत होता एक जंगल होता तो कितना अच्छा होता ये नहीं है इसलिए मेरे मन में बाहर जाने की इच्छा बहुत प्रबल होती गई बाहर भटकने की इच्छा प्रबल होती गई मुझे लगा कि मैं गांव के बाहर चलूं, देश देखूं, दुनिया देखूं, और इस तरह से मन में संकल्प बनते गए दिस इंडोमिटेबल स्पिरिट एंड डिजायर फॉर ट्रेवलिंग has taken bhola bhai to places far far beyond the imagination of the little boy of soja village the reflections are so very bright in his writings what astonishes me and surprises me is that you know that in his 40s he started creative writing before that you know he was a translator he was a critic he was a professor of hindi but with a bang he came as a creative writer of a vidisha and still you know it's my one of my favorite book vidisha not that you know uh, in that in every essays of rameshwaram or mandu or uh, sanchi or any other uh, different uh, places you know He has amalgamated the Indian culture, Indian literature, Western literature, with his own creative experience. But 
the essay I like the most is uh, Tesham Dikshu. Uh, it's about his, uh, his ordinary village. You know. There's nothing extraordinary about that village, you know. But the wings of immunization, uh, the, the wings of uh, imagination, and the wings of words, you know, uh, it takes you know, to the far, far away places and ages. You, know. you can travel in the aeons. It's very ordinary, mundane type of a village. But when he writes about his village, I think it is one of the best essays he has written in that particular book, Vidisha. It's one of my favorite book, my favorite uh, essay. And I think it is one of his favorite essay also. Because when he compiled the uh, selected essays, you know, he, he gave the name of the book, Tesham Dikshu. And, uh, you know, big, many, many people are there, you know, they know many languages. But he has uh, not learned the language for Swanta Sukhai. Apni khud ki anand ke, khud ke anand ke liye hi unho ne nahi sikha hai. Jo bhi achcha hai, wo sahitya mein, unho ne logo ko baanta hai. He knows English, you know, he has learned German. He was a professor of English. He was a professor of uh, Hindi. And uh, particularly the East Indian languages, Bangla, Odia, and Assamia. He has learned all the three languages. And from that languages, he has translated many, many remarkable books from Odia, from Assamia and from Bangla. And the major work he has done, you know, for me, because people were knowing Ramdhanath, but no, nobody was talking about Jibranan Das. I think he was the first man who brought Jibranan Das to Gujarat. It has always been difficult for Indian writers to resist the attraction of Bengal, one of the cradles of modern Indian literature. And Bhola Bhai was no exception to it. He spent a year at the Vishwabharati University in Shantiniketan as a fellow of contemporary Indian literature and learned Bangla. The result is a priceless collection of translations. তার কবেকার অন্ধকার বিদিশার নিশা মুখেতা শ্রাবস্তির কারুকার্য অতি দূর সমুদ্রের পর হাল ভেঙে যে নাবে হারায়ছে দিশা the result is a priceless collection of translations of some of bangla's greatest poets like jibanananda dash bhulabai has the a scholarship and the perception not only as a translator but as a reader and primarily as a reader because he can judge for himself that what kind of literature will be acceptable to his client uh, readership and he never forgets that the client uh, readership is a miscellaneous one so, we have found him translating from Bengali such classics as Gora by Rabindranath Tagore, a huge novel, and also poems by Jibonarando Dash. Keshatena ati prachin andhakar vidishani nisha, mukhatenu shravastinu shilp, ati dur samudrama. वन लता से
thought of travel around in India. In the beginning in India, different parts of India, Madhya Pradesh, Vidisha, Kajuraho, then in Gujarat, this Saputara, and then Taranga Hills, and Patan, and then in Maharashtra, Ajanta, Elora, and Himalayas too. That way, we moved around on the seashores, high hills, plains. I could notice that his love for nature was deep. He had a wonder lust, and this lust, say, stimulated him to go around the world also. And gradually, again we formed a different group of travellers together. I was astonished when we planned to travel, Bhola Bhai passed through so many books in which so many things about European culture. ever eager to know more and more about our Assamese literature, its development, recent path-breaking literary publications. We, the entire Assamese people, find in him a well-wisher, friend and propagator of Assamese literature through translations into Gujarati and Hindi. When I met him for the first time in 1983, he had already published a good number of Assamese poems in Gujarati under the title Aswamiya Kavita. But he was at that time planning an exhaustive volume of Assamese poems in translation in Gujarati. At Santini Ketan, we studied uh, almost the entire modern Assamese poems, particularly the poems of Nilamani Kukan, Navakanta Borua, Nirmal Proha Bordeloi, Kiren Bhattacharya, Bhaven Borua, Bireswar Borua, and many others. He personally knows many of these poets made them and keep in touch with them. It was my duty to interpret in simple language every tidbit of Assamese culture so that he can grasp the meaning of the poems clearly. The smallest nuances of Assamese culture did not escape his notice and he was eager to know more about Assamese literature and culture. He traveled Assam, so far as I know, twice. The second time I accompanied him in the entire tour of Assam from Mano Sanctuary, Borbata Sotra, Guwahati, Majuli and of course my own village Kalugaon at Sipsagar district. We spent one or two days at each place mostly in our friend's house so that he could observe our lifestyle from a very close corner. We stayed at the Satradikar's residences of Borpeta, Aunyati and Notun Kamalabari Satras. He narrated his experience of travelling in Assam in his various uh, travellers. I feel ever eager to know more and more about our Assamese literature, its development, recent path-breaking literary publications. We, the entire Assamese people, find in him a well-wisher, friend and propagator of Assamese literature through translations into Gujarati and Hindi. When I met him for the first time in 1983, he had already published a good number of Assamese poems in Gujarati under the title Aswamiya Kavita. But he was at that time planning an exhaustive volume of Assamese poems in translation in Gujarati. At Santini Ketan, we studied the Almost the entire modern Assamese poems, particularly the poems of Nilamani Kukan, Navakanta Borua, Nirmal Proha Bordeloi, Kiren Bhattacharya, Bhaven Borua, Bireswar Borua, and many others. He personally knows many of these poets, met them, and keep in touch with them. It was my duty to interpret in simple language 
every tidbit of Assamese culture so that he can grasp the meaning of the poems clearly. The smallest nuances of Assamese culture did not escape his notice and he was eager to know more about Assamese literature and culture. He traveled Assam, so far as I know, twice. The second time I accompanied him in the entire tour of Assam from Mano Sanctuary, Borbata Sotra, Guwahati, Majuli, and of course my own village Kalugaon at Sipsagar district. We spent one or two days at each place mostly in our friend's house so that he could observe our lifestyle from a very close corner. We stayed at the Satradikar's residences of Borpeta, Aunyati and Notun Kamalabari Satras. He narrated his experience of travelling in Assam in his various uh, travelogues. For a long time, he has been associated with Odia literature. He has written many um, things on Odia literature. This is a interview with uh, famous writer Gopinath Mahanti. It was published in Gujarati and even he once uh, went to Katak as the chief guest in the Bisuba Milana. It was about 82 or 83. Uh, he was the chief guest of Bisuba Milana. Bisuba Milana is the largest um, literary gathering of Odisha and it is um, a very sophisticated uh, literary gathering where all the literature of Odisha used to go there during the three days uh, conference. So, it was a uh, special honor to Bholabhai to which Odia people have given. Probably these mementos do not speak enough for the man's achievements, but it nevertheless savors their presence in his collection. All men of learning are not men of literary taste, and all men of literary taste are not men of learning. Bhorabai is both a man of learning and a man of literary taste. It has helped him in being an excellent teacher and an excellent translator. What is more, it has helped him in being an excellent essayist. His essays, both personal and critical, are likely to find a permanent place in the history of Gujarati literature. I would particularly want to highlight uh, an aspect, which is that Bolabai Patel was the only chairman of Vaisamman whose mother tongue was not Hindi. His mother tongue was Gujarati and yet he rose to be the chairman of the Chayan Samiti of the Vaisamman. Now, why I am highlighting this point? Because one of the major uh, motivating factor in literary activities of KK Builder Foundation was to be able to cross the language barrier, to cross the culture barrier and to, to foster the concept that Indian literature is one, though written in many languages. And Dr. Bolabai Patel chaired that samiti from 1996 to 2003, and it is under his stewardship that uh, major luminaries of Hindi literature like Dr. Kedanath Singh, Srilal Shukla, Giriraj Kishor, Kailash Bajpayee, who won their samman.
तेषाम देक्षु नामक विख्यात निबंध है जिसमें घर क्या है माँ क्या है ये ग्राम जीवन से उनका जो नाता है वो मुझे और उनके निकट ले जाता है मैं तो अक्सर सप्ताह में दो दिन जाता हूँ और खुद भी खेती करता हूँ तो भारत का ग्राम जीवन भारत की शिक्षा इसकी सारी समस्याएँ भाषा शिक्षा साहित्य की शिक्षा इन सारी बातों से बोला भाई जुड़े हुए हैं और साहित्य के क्षेत्र में निबंध लेखन समीक्षा लेखन अनुवाद और भारत भारतीय साहित्य की क्या छवि है वो दूसरों तक पहुँचाने में आपका बहुत बड़ा योगदान है गुजराती के प्रसिद्ध साहित्यकार भोला भाई पटेल उनका सबसे पहला परिचय अगर देना हो तो वो है आजन्म अध्यापक कहते हैं अध्यापक बनाए नहीं जाते मुझे लगता है कि भोला भाई इस उक्ति पर बिल्कुल ठीक उतरते हैं लगभग 60 साल उन्होंने अध्यापन किया और आज गुजरात में गुजरात में क्या भारत में उनके छात्रों की लगभग पाँचवीं छठी पीढ़ी काम कर रही है ये भोला भाई पटेल शिक्षक स्कूल में रहे उसके बाद कॉलेज और बाद में विश्वविद्यालय में उन्होंने प्रोफेसर पद पर कार्य किया साहित्य के संस्कार उनके छात्र साहित्य शब्द का मूल तत्व जानते हुए आलोचना के उन क्षेत्रों को छूते हैं जिनके साथ भोला भाई का बहुत गहरा संबंध है आस्वादक भोला भाई आलोचक भोला भाई अध्यापक भोला भाई अनुवादक भोला भाई उनकी कक्षाओं में हमने विश्व साहित्य का पान किया है उनके साथ बैठकर शोध कार्य जब हम कर रहे थे तो उस समय उन्होंने साहित्य के एक एक दरवाजे हमारे लिए खोले हैं समीक्षा और आस्वाद इसमें क्या भेद है उनके साथ ही हमने जाना कि समीक्षा पांडित्य नहीं है समीक्षा एक रचनात्मक कार्य है मैं अपने निजी अनुभव से कहूँगी कि उन्होंने मेरी साहित्य रुचि को एक शिल्पी जिस तरह से बनाता है एक एक रेखा उकेरता है वैसे उन्होंने उकेरी है मैं आज गुजराती में उपन्यास लिखती हूँ लेकिन जब मैं अपनी कक्षाओं में हिंदी पढ़ाती हूँ तो मेरे सामने एक आदर्श होता है और वो आदर्श है भुला भाई पटेल The restless voyager has settled down at last. His family of four sons, daughter, and their own families have probably bound him down for good. Shaku Ben, his wife and co-traveler for the last 60 years, probably understands it more than anybody else. But the traveler still travels more on pen than on feet.
Indian literature would never want this journey to stop for herself and for generations to come.